Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Pulse TV Africa. A court dismisses the suit seeking to declare 25 Rivers Assembly seats vacant. Justice Okogbule Basam of Rivers State High Court in Port Harcourt dismissed the suit against 25 lawmakers who switched parties. The court ruled that the lawmakers are still members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, due to lack of evidence of their all-progressive Congress membership. A previous court decision on May 30 had declared the seat of the 25 lawmakers vacant pending further legal proceedings. The court also ordered the speaker to stop his duties and barred the lawmakers from acting as assembly members. This was uh, um, about challenging the, the seat of the members of the State House of Assembly led by the Honorable Speaker, Right Honorable Martins Chike Amehula. The claimant has sought the relief of the court to declare their seats vacant. And of course, with what happened in court today, it's quite obvious they are unable to prove that indeed they have defected from PDP and has joined the APC. It's an issue of hard facts and of course the law. You don't just imagine defection and assume that it has occurred. It's something that must be predicated in law. And of course, you must be seen to have proved that. Well, for the fact that there, there are similar matters in other courts, I may not be able to go further into this. But for the purposes of what has happened or the decision in the matter, at the instant matter, the justice is well served and quite predicated in law. All right, joining us to unravel what's going on in River State is Barrister Justice Uwebo. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Barrister Uwebo, can you hear us? Good morning. Yeah, I can. I can. I said good morning, and it is my pleasure once more. Okay. Uh, well, let me kick off with the first question. Um, what is the place? <coughs> what is the place of spoken words in law? Like, you make a confession with your mouth, and uh, what position does the law have for confessions like that? Well, um, it's a civil matter. In, in civil matters, it's not confession. It's only in criminal matters we regard them as confession. In civil matter, it is called admission. Yeah. And once somebody has admitted to a fact, or somebody has said something, admitting to a fact, I don't think it needs no other proof. It's so unfortunate the way we are going in this country. We are killing our democracy. There's no two ways about it. Uh, very, very unfortunate. That's why I'm laughing. This is not the first time something is happening and all the rest. But it's, it's, so, it's so unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. And uh, going further, if you remember, uh, a court of the same uh, coordinate jurisdiction has uh, also giving judgment in this matter. I thought they would have gone to court of appeal if they had wanted to, you know, a sort of uh, appeal that judgment or whatever. But they also went to the same uh, high court of the same coordinate division that gave a judgment prior to this time. It's so unfortunate the way we are going in this country. <clears throat> if care is not taken, we will continue this way. Uh, we are heading to doom. Uh, as, as we progress, I'll give you an example of what happened in Imo State. Mm. We need to be proactive. Yeah, but, but it's worrisome to us because um, if they didn't go to the Court of Appeal, it's just like the same thing that happened in Kano State where, where the Emir, uh, one, one, one court was saying you are the Emir, you, you should be protected. Another court was saying you cannot sit there, you cannot dethrone the other Emir and all that. And the same courts of the same uh, competent jurisdiction as you have said no, so coordinate coordinate jurisdiction coordinate coordinate jurisdiction mm -hmm. okay yes. well but how however that is if it is not the court of appeal and this uh, court is giving this uh, ruling as well is, is it safe to say we can disregard the second one because it's more of the same thing well this is what we call um i put, I put it uh, uh, in law, uh, conflict of laws. 
You understand? Uh, that's why I'm saying that um, <clears throat> as a lawyer, it's my constituency. And uh, each time I speak or each time legal issues like this come out, I always try to be very careful. But in being careful, we must also be proactive and tell ourselves the truth and stand on the truth. Uh, you see, there are hierarchies of courts as uh, uh, the legal system has uh, you know, established it. If you get a judgment in any lower court and you want to obtain that same judgment, the best thing for you to do is to go to uh, uh, a higher court, which is the court of, uh, uh, court of, um, uh, that court of appeal. You know, in as much as here, there are issues where the same court can overrule itself. Right? But there are procedures, there are laid down procedures and precedents to follow. For that one, the same court, the same court can overrule itself when a court has given a judgment and it is, it is discovered that that judgment was gotten by fraud or by misrepresentation. The same court can overrule itself. But yeah, it is, it is a court of the same court in the jurisdiction. For me, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Let me put it that way. But we are, we are gradually killing our democracy. Hmm. But is it right for, because I know this was a, a lot going on, a, a lot of rockers in River State. So is it right for some people to decide that I'm going to leave PDP and move to APC, but I still want to function in my duty, even though I know that I am not in the same party that elected me? Is that supposed to happen? It is not supposed to. The truth is this. Even it has happened severally. Uh, even I think there have been a couple pronouncements on that. It's about, you see, let me tell you, as a legislator, once you leave your, once you denounce or you defend from your political party to another political party, while in office, you are to leave that position. Because even, even as he said, unless if you can prove, there are some, some, uh, uh, judgments on that, except if you can prove that there is a pending problem, a pending crisis in that political party, and that is the reason why you are leaving. But in this situation, PDP was not having crisis in, in River State and all the rest, so you are just leaving this and going to this. Then if you're leaving it, which party brought you into, into, into power, into office? The PDP. So if you're leaving the PDP, you must also leave the position. Let, 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 let's get one thing right here. It's not because it's PDP or APC. It mm -hmm. goes across all the political parties. Let me give you an example of what happened in Imo State. If you remember, during the time of, um, of um, uh, Ararume, and yes, it was Ararume uh, then, and and, the, and Lokana Ugu, when Ara Rumen won the primary election of the PDP governorship PDP in Imo State, and a few days to the election, uh, his name was substituted uh, with uh, I think uh, Ugu uh, Rukana Ugu, and the matter went to the third floor. The matter went to the third floor, and the court said that you cannot substitute a candidate just like that. That there must be cogent and verifiable reason. Cogent and verifiable reason. And that, that decision has come to stay to today. If not, the, if the Supreme Court have not made that pronouncement, would have been having series of problems like that to today. Remember the same thing happened in Omeya and Amechi in River State. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what, you see, I don't know. Oh, the judiciary, we, we, we have to help to build this democracy. We have to help to build this democracy. It's unfortunate. Even if somebody from APC leaves a party in office and enter another political party, you are to leave that position. There's no two ways about it. Because why? You did not contest as an independent candidate. Hmm. You were sponsored by a political party. Yeah. But I don't know. It's, it seems like um, while the politicians are doing a lot of things and getting away with it, the judiciary is also doing a lot of things and getting Aiden. away with it. Because if these things were not happening like this, we wouldn't have lost the kind of confidence that we should have lost in the judiciary. Is there no way of uh, holding the judiciary in check? Because these things keep happening. And like you, you said, you, uh, some of these things even disgust people who are in the profession themselves. Mm -hmm. So is there no way of reining in uh, the, the, the excesses of some of these uh, uh, judicial houses, <laughs> also to say the cost mm -hmm. of the people who are handling these issues? Well, the truth is that I, when, when I was in secondary school, 
Uh, I read the novel we were in literature. One of the novels we read in literature then was The Incorruptible Judge. Yeah. I don't know whether some of you came across it. I read it so as well. Yes, The Incorruptible Judge. I, I, it's so unfortunate. So, if as at that time, uh, how many years ago, uh, there could be a novel like that about the incorruptible judge and the other rest. So you can see what is happening. But uh, for me, just like you asked, I think two things are involved. One is a thing of personal issue. Whom are you or who are you before you join the bench? You know, even we as lawyers, as uh, private practitioners, we know ourselves. We know people that have integrity. You know, we know people that live above board. So there are some of us that you can that can go to the bench, my dear. They can never compromise, and and that is the reason why you see some of these things happening. And I have said it severally that we should bring up a mechanism where, uh, uh, how do I put it? The, the the governors, the president, or whatever, will have hand in appointment of judges. Let it be solely the work of NJC and maybe the State House of Assemblies or the National Assemblies. When you apply, it goes through the National Assembly, it goes through the State House of Assemblies, and then to the NJC. Unfortunately, it was not like this before. Unfortunately, before judges were appointed before, go and check your records. The NJC, the MBA of every branch, of the branch of that state, will have a very big role to play. A memo will be sent to the MBA, you know, to vet those people who has applied for this judgeship. But nowadays, some of these procedures have been killed. It, in fact, it has now become a political appointment. Mm -hmm. There are no two ways about it. Let me listen to that. And that is why you've seen some of these things happening. It's terrible. So, uh, when you take a practicing lawyer, when you take a practicing lawyer who has been in practice for a very long time and make him a judge, there are certain things that person cannot do. Because it knows the procedure. Hmm. So, in a case like this now with River State, obviously we've seen different courts um, with different judgments. How do we proceed from this? Are they supposed to appeal to a higher court? Is it supposed to go to the Supreme Court, or what is? How, how are we supposed to go about it? Well, I, I know, I know, and I believe that this matter will definitely get to the top floor, yeah. which is the Supreme to make a pronouncement. There are no truth about it. And again, just like you, my brother rightly said, I don't know why, uh, I don't know, our people or my constituency should allow politicians to be using them. See, let me tell you one thing. What we are doing in this country is for the good of everybody. Yeah. And not for the good of APC or the good of PDP or the good of the governor or the minister or anybody, as far as I'm concerned. And let me also tell you, the when we were in school, we were taught Especially in 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 in, in lot of thought and some other cases, there are so many decided cases, especially in the Western one and other. Let me now say this: judgments can be given based on public morality, based on public stability, and based on public interest. So when you give some judgments that do not conform with public interest, you are killing the society. Mm. Yes. So there's a provision like that in law. Yeah. Because everybody uh, keeps telling you that. It's a, just he, just it's just law, just is, law is just law is black and white. Are given, especially the Supreme Court. Most judgments are given based on public interest, public security, public stability. Mm. Because you can't give a judgment that will, that, that will tear a whole country uh, astray or yeah. tear a whole state, you know, or set them ablaze. You cannot. It's not your duty as an adjudicator. Hmm. And I know that in cases like this, because if this can happen in River State, obviously there are precedents. So uh, another state could possibly do this, and they will say, oh, it happened in River State. Mm -hmm. This was the judgment that was given. And so that judge then will have to look at precedents and say, it's okay to do that. So what kind of precedents are we setting um, for our democracy going forward? Well, the truth is this, um, that is why it's not good to lay a bad precedent. Mm. Once you lay a bad precedent to correct it, it's always very, very difficult. But what I'm trying to say, I'm also calling on people, my colleagues and Nigerians, is for us to do the needful, to do the right thing. Especially this period that we are now in era of 
political hooliganism. Let me let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Political hooliganism. Or uh, somebody becomes a godfather and wants to control the whole state, mm -hmm. wants to control the whole nation, and wants to control everybody, and everybody is answering, sir, 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 sir. We are now in the era of era where uh, parts of our assembly members become errand boys to the mm -hmm. governor. Mm -hmm. and so how can you make good laws? And you forgot that you, you are not there for the governor. You are there for the people of the state. Because the moment you become an, a house member, you are a house member representing your constituents in the state and not representing the governor. The same thing goes to the National Assembly. As a senator, you are a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are not a senator of BDP, APC, Abja, or any other party. As a president, you are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And if you watch what the president is doing today, so somehow that is where I, I somehow I give the I give the president kudos in some of his policies and some of the things he's doing. You know, so if you, when you see yourself that you are serving the nation, I think personal interest or whoever that helped you come into power becomes secondary. Yeah. So what's the way forward now for all of this in river states? Mm. How would you want them to move, especially with this judgment that has been given? Yeah. In your opinion, do you think um, the, the people who, not the lawmakers now, the river state government should appeal? Because if it doesn't need to hold water by law, it shouldn't be a very significant thing. Maybe they don't even need to pursue it further, except they get a judgment from the appeal court. What do you advise them to do? They, I, I think they will appeal, but like you rightly say, remember, uh, the, the, the River State Government has a, uh, have a judgment. This third will have a judgment from the same court of coordinate jurisdiction. That's where I talk about conflict of laws. At the end of the day, which one suffice? But in law, we say when equities are equal, when equities are equal, the force in time prevails. Mm. Mm. And when equity is meet, the law prevails. So vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, whatever they think, and we are lawyers, we know how to apply some of this. <laughs> but the, what I'm trying to say, I'm also pleading, pleading to my colleagues, mm -hmm. please, everything is not all about money. Everything is not all about trying to do this or do that. Let us do the right thing in order to save this country and our democracy. Because of our children, Mm. Because any president will sit now, he's going to haunt them in the future. Mm. Just before we I go, just, just before we go, because um, we're, we're run out of time, let me just digress a little bit and then ask you this question. Because when we talk about presidents, like Rume said, uh, something was set during the um, election uh, where the INEC chairman made pronouncements and when it got to the court, he said they were just pronouncements. Yeah. They, they, they didn't even consider that when they were giving the judgments and all that, which means all, a president was set almost, you know, so it could be followed. But uh, from what you're saying, there is also need for sanity within the judicial system. Where do we start to bring the sanity to the judicial system so that we don't get into this kind of uh, condition that we are finding ourselves? It's not in dispute. We need sanity in the judiciary, and not only in the judiciary, everywhere. Let me shock you. Personally, as I am, it's not every matter that I take, no matter how much you want to pay me. Mm. I, don't take, I don't undertake any matter that my conscience will not accept. Mm. That my dictums and ethics, my, you know, apart from the ethics of the profession, there are, there are also ethics of your person. Mm. Yeah. There are some personal ethics about yourself. I don't matter the money that is involved. That's a one good thing. That's integrity. One day, yes, one day we will all die, but you will be remembered for all these things. Mm -hmm. So I think, first of all, we should be looking at inward before we appoint judges. Uh, something happened. I went, I traveled sometime to Imo State, and appointment was made. You know, and some people are complaining, lawyers are complaining. Ah, so some person is corrupt. They know him as a corrupt person when he was in the lower bench. Now he has been elevated. But he's not talking. What are you doing about it? What is the NBA doing about it? Mm. It's a, it, 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 it now becomes an issue of personal integrity. I cannot hold what I cannot sustain. And that goes to what we say that a person cannot do what he does not have. Mm. I don't know about it.
So okay. first of all, leave politics alone. Look at the integrity of people you are pointing to. Bench. Because the lives of many is in their hands. Okay. The, the, the integrity of the state, the moving forward or going backward of the state, is in their hands. So we should be very careful. Mm. All right. Uh, well, this is a good way to drop it. Yes. Uh, it's good that you have said that uh, sanity should be in everything. But judiciary, please, the last hope of the common man, mm -hmm. do something about it. And all mm -hmm. of us will follow suit. Because if we do anyhow, judiciary gives us anyhow. <laughs> and we go to prison. <laughs> That's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Barista, we want to say thank you. Thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We'll be speaking with Barrister Justice Awake, who is a human rights lawyer. And we've just been trying to make sense of what's happening in River State with the court dismissing the suits to make the 25 seats being vacant. All right. That is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having breakfast with us. It's lovely as always. My name is Brumette Paulson. And I am Yamgul Agagi. Have a lovely day. Hello.